Good afternoon, Phoenix. It's 2 o'clock Sunday, and it's time for Need to Read. And um, I see that my on-air light came on just before the music started. Uh, so I assume that I am greeting my listeners today, uh, as of now, and I uh, thank you for joining us. And we have a special guest today, of course. Uh, I think we talked about it last week. I hope you uh, took note of that. Uh, this show, uh, remind uh, any um, any new listeners what this show is about. It's about reading for <clears throat> for fun, profit, and understanding. And uh, today's guest is going to uh, is going to accentuate that with uh, with uh, he's got uh, some books that he's going to introduce us to that had helped him in his in his quest for understanding. And he's uh, something of a life coach and a philosopher uh, by trade, a, a lawyer, a personal injury lawyer. And uh, he's going to introduce us to um, he's going to introduce us to uh, a, um, a a program that he's helped uh, people uh, follow and that helps them achieve success. And I'm not exactly sure if he's talking strictly more uh, material success or whether it expands beyond that. I'm sure it expands, expands much beyond that. Um, I want to uh, remind everybody that this show is about reading and comprehension, reading for fun, profit, and understanding, reading for truth, discovering the truth, and hopefully uh, help, helping change the world. And I also uh, came up with this great little um, idea of mine. Uh, much, I have such a great big ego about what I've read that I believe that if you give me your birth date month, day, and year I somehow can find in my vast lab, uh, library uh, a, a, an appropriate story to help you in your life and, and if it isn't some life changing story it'll at least be fun and at least do something for you so uh, feel free to call in uh, or email me at need to read KFNX eleven hundred <coughs> need to read KFNX eleven hundred at Gmail and give me your birthday and I'll send you a recommended reading or you can call the station and uh, and give me that and give me that information as well. Our call in number six zero two two seven seven five three six nine or toll free eight six six five three six eleven hundred and if you're using a landline to make a toll free call, then you dial the one. And that would be one eight six six five three six eleven hundred. Otherwise, just call six zero two two seven seven five three six nine. And if you do call in today, we just want to, want you to call in with a very short question, and then take it off the air if you can. And only if you're some kind of incredible philosopher and you engage us in some long winded conversation will we want to go on any further than that. As to get on with the show and, and not waste any more time, uh, I'd like to go ahead and introduce uh, uh, Mr. Andrew Alex, and he is with. Um, oh, I've lost my notes here. He is with Andrew. Why don't you tell us who you're with? Let, let me do that. That's exactly right. <clears throat> I'm uh, Andrew Alex. Primarily, I practice law, but I'm not here today to talk about law. But since it's an introduction. Uh, our firm is Alex and Savedra. That's S A A V E D R A. Um, I started the firm 35 years ago on the day my first son was born. Um, um, we do uh, bodily injury. That means like car accidents, uh, motorcycle accidents, tractor trailer accidents. We represent motorcycle organizations and other organizations. Um, I think what's important is we do a lot of trial work, um, both in federal courts and state courts. And our firm is um, AV rated. Uh, AV rated by the gold standard in our industry is Martin Del Hubble. And what that means is we have the highest rating of any law, any law firm, uh, both in terms of technical capabilities and ethics. I'm AV rated personally. My partner is AV rated and our firm is AV rated. Um, I, I think really what's important is the client reviews and uh, we're five star. Uh, well, certainly anyone spending money for a lawyer is going to want to have the highest rating 
on on that lawyer that he spends. And so I absolutely agree that's that's essential. <coughs> uh, and so and, and and it's good to hear that you have that kind of rating and and it's um but you're not here to talk about your your lawyering. That's right. And uh I'm really interested in this um uh, this program that you've gotten. I'm not sure what to call it, whether to call it a ther- a therapy or um or what, but I would let you describe it. And I know there were some things that you, you brought out to me while we were talking about this. Because, uh, I, you know, I never talked to Andrew about this except to just, just before the show here, we had about 40 minutes to talk to, talk to him. And so I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting, he's, he's showing me at the same time he's showing you. But he did, we did talk a little bit and, and he pointed out a couple of things about how, how so many people are negative in their view of themselves and their past and their future. And he also said something about neuro linguistic. He's a neuro linguistic practitioner and, and neuro being the nerves and our, so our spinal cord, our, our, our nervous system. And he told me about the heart and the uh, solar, the uh, intestines and the brain sharing identical cells and how they interact with each other. And I know that's beyond what you, I know you're going to introduce us, get a little more history about sure. what you've done, but I just wanted to whet the appetite of the, of the listeners with that concept that the heart and the brain actually cooperate, that the heart is not just an organ. And so I wanted, I wanted to throw that out there and I wanted to let you go ahead and, and, and talk to us about how you got started with the, um, with this and it, it, the loss of your of the love of your life and the mother of your children as well. Well, well, thank you for the introduction and the comments about the heart and and the intestine and the kudalini. Um, I, I, I I like to refer to ourselves as the third space. Okay, the first space is what you learn at home. The second space is what you learn in school. But then after that education, we think that education should continue, life education. And we want to, the, the people we've, that we've taught say that, um, that we've helped them find prosperity and happiness and that they would never go back to where they used to be, you see. Um, we teach people how to live and to be fully present in the here and now and to be fully alive, you see. Um, and we think a big part of it is most people are identified as external thinkers, you know, mm-hmm. driven by the ego. Mm-hmm. And we teach people how to become internal thinkers. Uh, and I want to spend some time today explaining that, if, if you don't mind. So, Absolutely. how do we you get started, mind. right? That's the question I think you asked. How did I get started? I, my story is, is really one out of necessity. Um, I was madly in love with my wife. Um, we were married for many, many years. We had three beautiful children. I had a busy law practice, and then the unimaginable thing happened. My wife died unexpectedly. And there I was with three children, um, a freshman in college, uh, one in high school and one in uh, seventh grade. And frankly, because I spent so much time in the office doing things that I thought were important, I'm not proud of it. But when my wife passed away, I probably couldn't have picked my children out of a grocery store lineup. You know, I had no clue about being a parent. It's got to be a bit of an exaggeration. Well, you know, a lot of people nowadays usually uh, go through that. They work a lot, yeah. um, and a lot of the husbands anyway. And now it's coming where um, women and men are out of the out of the home a lot. So it's kind of uh, not uh, far from the what people are experiencing now today. The families definitely are not as close knit, closely knit as they used to be. Uh, obviously, uh, we live a lot. F- a lot further away from our, from our, uh, um, from our subsistence. I mean, people don't know how to grow anything. We don't grow, we don't get our food out of the garden and we don't go and slaughter our own chickens. Not even close. We don't even know anybody that does it. 
We just go to the grocery store. And, and that, um, you know, I, you mentioned another thing, uh, uh, that 60% of the people who graduate from high school never read another book. And 39% of the people who graduate from college never read another book. And that is, of course, what this show is all about, reading and comprehension and, and, and t- getting the benefit of other people's insights by the fact that they wrote it down. And uh, and we, when we come back from the break, because unfortunately we got to go to a break just about right now, we're going we're gonna to pursue that. So we'll be right back. And, and we, can, uh, we can dive into this a little bit further, and, um, and uh, I've got some questions I want to ask you. Marketing your company in the 21st century takes social media maintenance, branding, consistency across all media, custom web designs with timely updates, custom video production on a consistent basis. How many employees would this require? Too many. So, what's the solution? This marketing team. Contact us now to find out how you can meet your marketing needs while keeping your overhead low. Welcome back. Uh, we're talking to uh, Andrew, <coughs> Andrew Alex, and that was Andrew on on on, on the cough there. <laughs> and um, I just want to uh, remind everybody that uh, you're listening to Need to Read, and we talk about how important it is to read and uh, hear, uh, partake of the thoughts and and conceptions, conceptualizations, and the conclusions of other people. And instead of having just one mind to guide you, you can, you can tap the minds of countless people. And so, um, Andrew, a- Alex is here to, um, talk to about his, uh, his program that has helped people achieve success. So, um, you were talking, uh, when we broke about your, your, your family, you lost your wife and you had three children that you were needing to nurture. Yeah, thanks, Elon, and that's true. And and Sarah, who knows me, you know, I would tell you I work what twelve hours a day, seven days a week. Absolutely, absolutely, you do. And so when my sweetie passed away, um, I knew I had to change. But probably like so many of your listeners, I didn't know how to change. You know, so what I did is I started this investigation. And I learned something that had a profound impact on me. I learned that only one in 20 people find prosperity and happiness. That's by their own definition. Okay. True. And so if only one in 20, that's 5% of the people out there, find happiness and prosperity by their own definition, what happens to the other 95%? The other 19 out of 20. And these are just people who are asked this to describe something like that. And, and this is what they say. That's what they say. Yeah. And, and, and that, that was kind of, was kind of profound. I thought, well, maybe there's a solution to all of this and maybe I can help people as well as helping myself. You see? So I went, we were on this and I went on this investigation and then I found out something pretty shocking and I'm really honored. Uh, to be on this show because it's about need to read. Absolutely. And and let me tell you what we learned. All right. People who graduate from high school, I'm not talking about dropouts. I'm talking about people who graduate from high school. 60% never read another book in their life. People who graduate from college, 39% never read another book in their life. And if you're not reading, where's the growth? Now look, I, I realize that we're all busy. You know, your listeners are busy. Many people are busy. But I saw the, I saw not too long ago, and I have it in my materials, Bill Gates. He's busy. And his wife, Melinda, is busy. And he reads a hundred books a year. And they, you know, and it's very detailed. He knows exactly what books he's going to read. And then over and above that hundred, he may do extracurricular reading. Um, Warren Buffett, uh, reads a hundred books a year. His partner, Charlie Munger, uh, who's 93 years old, reads 200 books a year. You see? 
So it's pretty incredible, actually. It's, it's pretty it's, incredible. Yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible, but but here's the <laughs> thing, and I learned this, and, it, and it's made a big difference. Sarah, I know you're busy. Yes, you know? absolutely, all the time. Yes, Elon, I, I know you read, and I know you're busy, but for the rest of us, if we just read ten pages a day, just ten pages a day, mm-hmm. and I can read ten pages a day, at the end of a year, you will have read between twelve and fifteen books. And if you make those books count, that's a lot of knowledge. Absolutely. And I would like to add, as they, any of my listeners know, that I've always said that you should read, read all the time, but you should be selective in what you read because there is a lot of trash, junk, and just plain, just plain, I guess just plain trash out there and useless stuff to read. Like uh, James Patterson in his in his novels about spies and stuff, it could be a nice little adventure story. To but really, it, when you're done with it, it doesn't give you really anything. I mainly kind of read people things that are going to educate my future. So I find things like subjects that are going to benefit my career anyway. Since I'm already busy working twelve hours and always traveling everywhere, I find something that is going to make me better and me be more successful at what I'm doing. There you go for profit. Yes. Or for understanding something yes. of value. And that's, and that's why, uh, of course, Andrew's gonna, you're gonna introduce us to, to some books when you get to it. So I'll let you get back to it. And, I, I, you know, I will. Okay. No and, problem, huh? Yeah. And <clears throat> so we talk about people were busy and so they don't read, you know, that 60% and that 39%. Um, but there was a recent survey. That caught my attention. It was a nationwide survey. It came out about two years ago. And the conclusion at the, that survey, and it was across the board, uh, you know, didn't take any, you know, geopolitical, everybody. It was a very large survey. And what people found was 60% of all the people regret their career choice. They, they regret their career their, their choice. Their career choice. And so, Elon, if they regret their career choice, where's the leadership? Where's the commitment, you see, to their job if they're not happy in what they're doing, you see? 60% is almost like a big part of the nation and, and, the, and, and the middle you, class. And, and if, you're, if you regret your career choice, how are you going to ever get a raise? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you won't ever get a raise. Yeah, you, well, you'll get their cost of living raises and stuff like that. That's but the it, middle but class, as, yeah. as for, for progressing upward, it's going to be relatively difficult, yes. Well, and then there was one more shocking statistic, and that was 90% of the people out there never think about self-improvement. They may think about, you know, the day-to-day life and what's going on in their life family matters and financial concerns, but they're 90% never think about how do I improve myself? And what do you, and by that, by that, do you mean, um, uh, in all aspects, making yourself a better person overall, financially successful relationships, successful, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. All of that. I, I, I believe that if we don't evolve, we evaporate. Yeah. You see, and I, 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 to give you some idea, I, I have a, a list of 17 what I call icon books, which... Uh, 17. 17. <laughs> these are just the icon books, and they change. And then I have backups, okay? Okay. Include See, now, now you're talking my language, books. Okay. <laughs> but, but, you know, one of the most amazing books is called The Slight Edge. The by, Slight Edge. Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. That's with an O. O-L-S-O-N. I read that book once a year. It's a little, it's, it's, it's a, it's an easy book to read. Uh, you can read it in, uh, in one day. Then I have a lot of books on ancient wisdom, spirituality, and scientific knowledge for today. It's, it's, they're, they're books like The Power of Now by Ektok Tolle, T-O-L-L-E. The Rhythm of Life by Matthew Kelly. Yoga Principles and Practices, a beautiful book. The Tibetan Book of Life and Dying. 
a, an incredible book by Daniel Siegel. He's a psychiatrist. Uh, it's about the mind, a journey into the heart of a human being. Uh, and he also wrote a book, Mindsight, The New Science of Personal Transmission. Daniel Siegel, S-I-E-G-E-L. And there's a new book out. I waited three years for this book to come out. It's called Principles by Ray Dalio. Everybody should read that book. He runs the largest hedge fund. He's worth $17 billion. And he shares his secrets and his principles that made him successful and happy. And that's Siegel. No, that is Ray Dalio. Oh, Ray Dalio. Dalio. Excuse me. Siegel is given credit for defining what the mind is. Before this, and that was in 1995, before Siegel, 90% of all um, people who are behavioral scientists never didn't have any idea or, or definition of the mind. Of the what? Just, yeah, they just say, well, the, the mind must be what the brain does. Okay, okay. the Absolutely. mind. And, and of course... The, well, the mind plays point. tricks on you sometimes, you know, and, uh. Well, you you're know. saying that you're, you're implying right here that the mind and the brain are not the same. They're not the same. Yeah. And, um, in fact, I, I have the definition right here. And it's a, it's a very simple definition. Um, Siegel was just, was in a seminar. We are going to have to go to a break. You hear that music? Yes, you hear I that do. beautiful Gordon Lightfoot music? It's, we're going to go to a break here, guys. And uh, when we come back, you're going to you're going to continue on what, on this thought right here because we're right. going to go straight into that. So, uh, folks, we'll be right back with Andrew Alex. <laughs> 